Sanchez from Tewa Women United on American Indian Day at the legislature, and you've set up your own area. And what are you trying? What are you here for? What is she saying? I'm here to network and meet people and really let them know that there's um, healthy programs in Indian Country, and we want to know our legislators and let them also know that we're here to support them if they do good work for the people and listen to their constituents. And it's been a pleasure coming in and doing the openings for the first day that it started. And then now Indian Day, it's just great to see the spirit of the country's homeland people being represented and honored here. And um, I hope it continues that good partnership, that good camaraderie, that they listen to the needs of the Indians in the New Mexico. What are your priorities to be working on, or for the legislators to be working on? Well, the main one we were tracking, uh, wanting to really push, was the um, labeling. GMO food the, labeling? Yeah, uh, genetically engineered labeling. We wanted to know. You really let us decide if we want to buy it or not, but at least that it's visible. But then I think there's still next year or following, we can still be at it. And then the other one is the VAWAs. We want to make sure that they do uh, legislation that stops violence against Native women. That act is coming back up for the nation and the state should be in the forefront in pushing wellness in Indian country, especially Native women. What, what can the state do on that issue which is so huge? I think the partnership with um, sovereign nations and being able to give them some kind of support and funding to do the programs that are helping women and helping children and help, help to stop the violence that's permeating it. And they need that um, joint power statements. They need to know that that um, that we're citizens of both the U.S. and in Indian country. We need to get that going. Do you think that kind of sovereign nation status is respected here? In the legislature, I know that up in Canada, people are protesting with "I don't know more," and there's been kind of a breakdown in sovereign relations between the First Nations and the government. Is there is that better here in New Mexico? I think it's it fluctuates. It depends on Republicans or Democrats are in power, and then how much of the um, I guess funding stream. It all depends on the um, recognizing that. Even because we have dual citizen, that we, sh we it shouldn't just be um, just set aside for native in the native homelands, a sovereign nation, but both that we can have that access or that professionalism to be on both sides. I think that would be great, and I think legislation can be had that will honor that. And I think um, the jurisdictional issue is one that. Um, we really need to understand and uh, and have the honoring that there are different rules in different areas, but that they can cooperate with each other. I think another really big issue is water, and as part of that, climate change and fracking. There are some bills around fracking, disclosure of chemicals. I know, that fracking issue is really... Um, harmful to Mother Earth, to our water supply, but also to our health and to the health of the whole planet. You can't stuff something in your, just like injecting yourself with chemicals in your body and then not expecting it to hit your toe and your head and everywhere else. It's that same thing and it's like water is the life of all living things on this planet and we can't abuse it that way. I'm curious, last question I have is, what has been your experience, I know that you as a native person have very deep roots in New Mexico, in the last generation to what have you experienced with climate change, how is the climate changing on the climate ground? Climate changing on the ground is throwing our cultural ceremonies off, because the seasonal animals that we would dedicate our life to are, are off, you know, they're gone sooner, are not having reproduction, or either they're just being um, not supported in the habitat because this vegetation isn't there, so they've left the area. And so there's plants that have just disappeared, and we have a, a real um, relational bonding by our namesakes as well, by the mountains, by the animals, by the dances, and all that is impacting our culture. <laughs> Have you also seen effects from uh, water scarcity or drought or changing? Yeah, 
see water, seasons. Water scarcity, I think, is twofold. One is the diversion, that the river has a right to life where it's meant to be, instead of diverting it, and then you don't have the water. And because that's done, then the water supply doesn't regenerate in the area. So you don't have evaporation, you don't have snow, you don't have the rain. And so all that is um, climate change is affected by the pollutants as well. If the atmosphere is getting warm, the um, moisture isn't going to be there. So climate change is really man-made disasters that we can't control it. Yeah. The well, legislature needs to understand that. Mm. Anything else you want to say? Oh, I just say that um, if, if we lose the heart of our women and our children, things are going to really be dismal. But if we really unite as men and women together in honoring families and children, I think there will be so loving and a great cultural peace to come back into this state and the nation. Thank you. It's a beautiful statement. Thanks for being here.